Okay, ladies and gents. Um, this tutorial is going to be about some of the forms that we use um, for the initial intake when a cat first comes into our program. Um, I mentioned in my last video about the feline medication record. Um, this is what that record looks like. It's got everything that we should do to that cat, at least 90% of it before it goes out to an adoption site or to be adopted. All these forms, I do have in syllable form, so if you'd like them, just let me know. A lot of them are on our website, but we're going to fill this one out. So the name and ID, we're going to say Fuzzy, and his ID number was 845-whatever, and he came from Gilmer County. Um, then we would just delete that, it brings everything back up. Um, intake date, we're going to make that as Fuzzy came into our program on 08, 01, 2018. Um, and then from Gilmer County, and age, let's say Fuzzy is 6 months old. He is a domestic medium here for that. You can just highlight. Color, we're going to put him as an orange. That is. And we're going to make him male. Again, you can just highlight that option. Fuzzy is not microchipped yet. So, I see we are going to put him in this microchip. So, this is sort of. Um, and then we'll just add Fuzzy's microchip number. Um, um, and it, usually when they come in, they're not microchips, so then you just leave that blank and, and click no. Um, okay, so this part, you're going to have to print out um, and then handwrite it in as it happens, or you can save each form individually on your computer under that cat's name or file or however you want to do it. Um, usually, I just create their online record like this save it, and then open it up every time they get something done and add to it. So let's say Fuzzy had his first SVRCT on his incoming date, which is normal, given by me, due date, and put three weeks, so that's going to be 8, 21, 2018. Um, and this is where it's beneficial to print it out, because, or you can save the label however you want to do it, because you need to actually take the sticker off the vial and put it on there. Obviously, if you go to a vet's office or a stay neuter clinic or something like that, they don't normally give you the bottle, so they stick it on the paperwork themselves. That's fine. Uh, or you can ask the vet if they'll save the vial for you. Um, I can't imagine any of them saying no. Um, so let's say for the first week one, usually happens on date of intake. So, and then he'll need it again in a week. So, wait, wait. and let's say we did rounded for this, which is also a financial. Uh, sleep treatment 08, 01, 2018. Let's say we gave him revolution. Um, due date, that is a 30 month, 30 day treatment. So that would be that. It's not out long. I gave her that. And revolution for my days. Um, baby shot, let's say he got six. A month after intake, baby is just done at attachment because he went and got his wedding done. Um, always 30 days, um, same thing with the routine testing, if they got it all done at the same time, then you'd obviously just bring everything over, say a neuter date, same thing, um, you can also control C, control V that way, um, and let's say they had a soup reaction, so we're going to put blue reaction at space site 
Um, and but they they also got that, and you have this is probably the global team that sent it out there. Um, any notes? Um, did Buzzy have a reaction to anesthesia? Um, maybe he didn't ride the car well. Um, flea reaction. Make sure that they keep a 30-day flu treatment on him. Anything medical related that we need to know needs to go here. It helps you remember. It helps me know. It helps the site leads know. The adopters know because the adopters actually will get a copy of this. Um, well, they'll get the original to keep the copy. Um, but that is the streamlined record in a nutshell. It's going to help you keep everything in one place. Um, what I do is as soon as the cat comes into my house, I make them a folder. I print one of these out, put it in there. Um, I also will do the record keeping form as fillable just like this. Um, so we are making this for fuzzy. And then I don't know what it was, but whatever his ID number was. C line. So eight, so one, so eighteen. Um, so then we just kind of highlight for the vote. Fuzzy, fuzzy with orange. We we'll make some domestic medium here. Um, and then you would fill out where the animal came from. Um, if it came from a shelter, then it would be the shelter name, phone number, address, city, state, zip, things like that. Um, and it's also always release of ownership to rescue group. And we put a little mark there. If it came from, let's say, an owner surrender, then the person that we got the animal from, their information would be here. Their name, their phone number, their address, their city, their state, and there's this. This section here is only filled out once they get adopted. So this you're not going to do anything with unless you're doing the adoption from either your home, or meeting them at a site or something like that. Um, down here at the bottom, what was left over from just the cap. Uh, like, let's say if this was our friend's letter, then we would put friend's letter. Uh, that way, whoever's processing the paperwork after the adoption knows, hey, this is all part of a litter. Um, but and then the adopter's email goes there, and their ship number will go there. Um, this helps the paperwork processor at the end um, input things because everything they need is on the front page. If they're not chipped, obviously that information is not going to be there, um, so don't really worry about it. So like I said, I have all these in fillable format, so I can give you a copy of that. Um, another form that we that I just made, not very many people have it, is a feline paperwork checklist. This is an amazing thing to use for when you're the last stop for that cat before they go out to an adoption site. Um, the adoption lead, bless their heart, they, they do their best with what they're given, but only you know that animal going into that environment. So if you can complete this checklist or the majority of it and have it together when you give them to that adoption site, it greatly helps them keep everything together and so they're not stressed about it. Um, I know making folders gives lots of fosters anxiety and that's why I kind of laid it out this way. So if you're looking at the folder and it's just a regular Manila tab folder and you get it from Staples, Office Max, Walmart, Order them Online, Amazon, whatever, um, you can, on the left side of the inside of the folder is going to be the Microsoft registration form, the original medical paperwork. All the test results, the neuter, testing results, everything. The original rabies certificate was tagged. Um, that all goes stapled on the left side. The inside right of the folder is just going to be the adoption agreement filled out. Um, basically, you'll take your everything, your dates and everything from here, actually fill out the carbon copy of your adoption agreement. And that way, the people at the site know that this is their name, this is their birthday, this is where they came from, things like that. And that's actually what the adopters look at and they sign, so it needs to be filled out. Um, 
as far as the CCHS paperwork packet, this is the packet that you kind of start with when you first get the animal. It's the DOA rescue group form that I just showed you how to fill out, which is this one. This is the record keeping form. Um, every animal has to have one. Every animal. Um, whether they are brought into the program and transferred out to another rescue agency or given to a sanctuary or a barn cat is turned out onto a barn, every single animal has to have this record keeping form, even if the animal didn't survive and they passed away in care. Um, if that's the case, then sadly you would check the teeth. Um, and then all the copy of the medical and vetting paperwork from the left side. This paperwork packet, whenever you take it to the adoption site, always put that in an envelope with my name on it so I can pick it up when that animal gets adopted. And as you see, once that animal gets adopted, I go to that site, I pick it up, I've got all the paperwork I need from this section, and then I can also add the adoption application and the adoption agreement um, to that. And these right here is what I put together. And I have to have proof of everything that was done to show DOA. I have to keep all this on file. It gets the whole punch put in a binder, and then it gets put up in case we get audited or anything else. So this paperwork is crucial. Um, and that's a brief walkthrough of that. And if you have any questions, I can answer that as well. Um, another thing I want to touch on real quick is some of the forms that I just showed you are also on our website. If you're looking at the home screen and you go down to resource list and forms, it comes up like this. Um, adoption agreement is here. It's not a carbon copy, so you're going to have to make copies after they fill it out. Um, most of the adoption sites have carbon copies on hand. If you need some, let me know. Uh, microchip form is right here. If they were microchip but that's established, it's right here. Um, other places, you'd have to look, look on their website and send them out. Uh, adoption application is right here. This is what they have to fill out before they can adopt. Um, the stickers for the front, if you need any, let me know. I can get you some. They're actually just Avery labels that are the half sheet. Get them from Staples, Office Max, if you have that if you want to print your own. Um, medical chart um, is what I just showed you on there. The feline side is over here. The canine side is over here. So make sure that you're picking from the feline side. But if you click it, it downloads it for you. Um, and it should be able to click on that. It opens it up and fill it up. Um, trial request sheet, if somebody wants to go home on trial, that's usually reserved for adults, not kittens. If you need approval for that, let me know. Foster to adopt, same thing. Same thing with the payment arrangement. It doesn't happen often, but just in case. Um, and then the foster parent sheet. The foster parent sheet is something that you can fill out and put inside of each of your foster cat folders if you would like to have the opportunity to keep touch with that foster and learn or kind of keep track of them. You know, if the adopter is open, then they can contact you. They can let you know how they're doing. You can give them their likes or dislikes, things like that. So that's on there as well. Um, we also have the vetting forms. We don't use Georgia Animal Project for most of you guys. That's close up to me, but it is a possibility it's on there um, for the basic and if you have any other questions about paperwork, let me know. This is a nutshell. Like I said, I've only got 15 minutes for recording. So, um, if you think of anything else, so if you have any more questions, just let me know.